Blue and gold macaws prefer dead palm trees. Couples often have to modify the interior of their new home, even if some are more keen than others. Other pairs, desperate to breed, will destroy eggs and kill unattended babies, so parents have to be wary. Lack of nest sites is the most important natural factor controlling wild macaw populations. Only 10 to 20 percent of adult pairs actually get a chance to breed each year. The palms that blue and gold macaws need only grow in swamps. So this can mean that several pairs end up in the same area. A lack of privacy can even make a macaw blush. They can flush their facial skin with blood, turning it pink. They blush a lot during the first few weeks of the breeding season. This usually coincides with the start of the rains and is the only time of the year when courting couples mate repeatedly. Macaw mating seems to be precarious enough without having to do it in front of the neighbours. Sex for these birds seems to be very important, not just for the physical act of reproduction, but also to reinforce the bond between partners. Like many animals which mate for life, there is almost no visible difference between male and female macaws. Males are perhaps slightly larger, with heavier looking beaks, but apart from that, it's very difficult to tell. A mother macaw usually lays two to four eggs, each the size of a small hen's egg. She then takes on the task of incubation, which means she'll have to sit for about a month. She relies on her mate to stand guard outside and bring her food. When they first hatch, the babies are tiny and blind. Rearing them is tricky as they need to be fed every few hours and must be kept warm and clean. They need protection, too, as they're vulnerable to predators like toucans, coatimundis. Even if everything goes well, life for infant macaws is usually hard and rather tragic. Although several eggs may be laid, only one baby normally survives. It would appear that macaws, like birds of prey, lay extra eggs as an insurance policy. If the season is kind, there'll be plenty of food for all. However, if the food supply is not so good, then the younger ones usually die. Macaw chicks spend three months in the nest, and the tattered tail of this female shows how much work she's put into parenthood. A small hole in a palm does nothing for a bird with such beautiful feathers. As well as feeding her chick, she showers it with affection. The relationship between parents and their young is very close. Tragically, this care can't protect young macaws from the greatest threat they face today, being stolen for sale in the wild bird trade. Combined with habitat destruction and the naturally low breeding rate, this trade has now driven many species of macaw close to extinction. Indeed, for some, it may already be too late. However, times are changing. In many parts of South America, people are actively helping macaws. There are projects which build artificial nest boxes to try and overcome the critical shortage of nest sites. Youngsters are monitored to see how they're developing and how healthy they are. Even if this meets with some rather indignant resistance. Chicks 
which are reared in poor quality nest holes are more at risk from disease or pests like bot flies. Research into what makes a good nest in the wild can influence the design of artificial ones and that can improve both the survival rate and health of the babies that are hatched in them. But there's another and far more surprising way in which people are helping macaws. Tourism. As more is being learned about macaws in the wild, interest in them has increased. More people want to see them as a free-flying natural spectacle. For about the same price as it costs to buy a pet macaw, you can fly to Peru or Brazil and see them in the wild. Watching them playing and flying free can be a magical experience. If managed fairly, the income from tourists can give local people the incentive to protect macaws rather than exploit them. This also means that large areas of natural habitat are now being preserved. Ensuring hope not just for these fantastic parrots, but for all the life that makes a rainforest.